SNES track. Hi there, a while back I took a look at every Disney SNES game, so now let's take a look at each Looney Tunes, Tiny Tunes, and Warner Brothers Super Nintendo game. I should mention that Looney Tunes was a huge, huge part of my childhood, and I'm a ginormous fanboy of anything involving Chuck Jones or Carl Stalling, so some of that might bleed over in this video. Going in alphabetical order, starting with Acme Animation Factory, and as you might guess from the title, this is a Mario Paint style game compatible with the SNES mouse. It allows you to edit pre-made sprite animations and place them in different scenes, and you can compose your own music as well. As far as Mario Paint clones go, this one is pretty good. Obviously, it's completely outdated by today's standards, but if you have a small child, this one along with Mario Paint might be entertaining for them. Animaniacs isn't Looney Tunes, but it is a Warner Brothers game, and a Warner Sister game, so I'm including it anyway. This one's developed by Konami, and it's kinda weird. You wander around a world map visiting various sound stages on the Warner Brothers studio, each representing a parody of a film genre, so yeah, the actual show is represented well here, and the game gets the sense of humor down well enough. As for the actual gameplay, it's odd. You only really have a dash attack, and there's no health bar, or even lives. You play as the three main characters, trying to recover 24 pages of a script while avoiding avoiding enemies sent by Pinky and the Brain. Yeah, they're here too. You can throw various items you find lying around, there's some interesting platforming elements here and there, and the level design allows you to be inventive with certain stuff, as you can see. And there's also this slot machine that activates every five coins you collect, but all it really does is either add to your coin total or take them away, and every 100 coins you get an extra continue. While there's some cool level design here, this game is just okay. There's better on this list. Next is Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage. I remember renting this one as a kid and having fun with it, so I might be a bit biased here. If nothing else, this is a great idea for a game, with Bugs being trapped in a world and tormented by an anonymous cartoon animator. The presentation here is fantastic, revisiting all sorts of old Bugs Bunny cartoons throughout 10 levels and seeing familiar characters like Marvin the Martian, that gigantic angry wrestler, and even Toro the Bull. In other words, it's like Mickey Mania, but with Bugs Bunny cartoons. The only thing with this game is the actual platforming. The Bugs sprite is pretty big and unusual lanky compared to most other platformer sprites, and it can take a while to get a good feel for how he jumps and controls. But the game is fair and gives you plenty of opportunities to get used to things, and there's an incentive to do so thanks to all the level design and the inventive premise behind the game. I wouldn't call Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage as good as anything like the Capcom Disney games, but it's still pretty good. Next we have Daffy Duck the Marvin Missions, based on the series of Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century cartoons, with Daffy as Duck Dodgers, Porky Pig as his assistant, and Marvin Martian as the villain. Again, this is a side-scrolling platformer, although with a bit more of an action slant this time, with Daffy being able to use five different guns across 20 levels, a freeze gun, an electric gun, a spread gun, a grenade launcher, and an anti-matter gun. And you collect money throughout each stage to pay for ammunition. You also have a jetpack to zip around each stage, and in addition to that, a shield, and this is one of those games where when you see an enemy, you put that shield up as soon as you can, wait for them to attack, and then shoot them. Otherwise, it's not likely you'll last long in this game, and that's kind of a bummer. The main problem, however, is the controls. They're extremely slippery and not easy to get used to. Also, it takes a ton of hits to destroy even insignificant enemies, let alone bosses. This game is okay. It's kind of a run-and-gun style where you can fly, so that's kind of cool, but if you want a game like that, you're better off with something like Sparkster or Skyblazer. Believe it or not, of all the games in this video, the best might be Looney Tunes B-Ball. It's pretty much the Looney Tunes equivalent of an NBA Jam game, so there's no fouls, tons of ridiculous dunks, and a lot of fun, silly stuff. You collect these gems on the court so you can later buy power-ups you can use during the game, like hitting your opponent in the face with a pie to create a turnover. How do you not love that? There's plenty of familiar characters you can play as, they're all animated well, and it's four-player compatible. Plus, there's tons of weird stuff like the ball turning into a dog when there's a shot clock violation. I wish I had more to say here, but it's really that simple. Looney Tunes B-Ball is a lot of fun and one of the best basketball games on the Super Nintendo. It's a good time. For a change of pace, we have Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday, with the goal of the game being to guide Porky through his nightmares, which take place in a hellish snowy landscape, underwater ruins, and a desert where it's literally raining cats and dogs. Again, like Rabbit Rampage and Looney Tunes B-Ball, this is such a great idea for a game that I wish they did more with it, but the game itself is pretty good. This is one of those platformers with much more of an emphasis on jumping and dodging. You do have a projectile attack, but your priority here should be to dodge enemies first, since they can appear from nowhere. The game controls well. This has tighter controls than the other platformers in this video, and the music fits the game well, and the visuals are of course fantastic. This one's a little on the easy side, but it's worth checking out. 
Chalk Up Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally is kind of a missed opportunity. Like most other games on this list, it captures the visual style of the cartoon almost perfectly, and the goal of the game is to have Roadrunner just outrun the coyote and avoid getting caught, and he'll use explosives and even this comical Batman outfit to try and catch him. Roadrunner has kind of a turbo meter that can be replenished by eating bird seed. The problem though is that with a game predicated on speed, you gotta have intuitive level design to complement your character's abilities, and it's just not here. Sonic 2, this is not. Combine that with some sloppy hit detection, and this is a frustrating one to play. Unfortunately, I'd have to say avoid this one. Interestingly, this game also received a sequel titled Wild E's Revenge, where you control Wild E Coyote and try and catch the Roadrunner, but it was never finished or released since the developer Sunsoft went bankrupt in 1995. There is a ROM available though, so you can at least play through the first level if you'd like. It should be noted though that if you get even within a few pixels of the Roadrunner, he sprints away, so that's unfortunate. According to an interview on SNES Central with the producer of the game, the goal was to collect parts to set up an elaborate trap to catch the Roadrunner. But I mean, what's the point if you can never catch him? This game seemed doomed from the start. Sticking with unfinished, unreleased games, there's also Sylvester and Tweety, another game that got cancelled thanks to Sunsoft declaring bankruptcy. This is a ROM available to play, but unfortunately there's really not much here. You play the game as Sylvester, you wander around Granny's house, and uh, yeah. Interestingly, there was another game in development from a completely different company titled Tweety and Sylvester, and that game was also cancelled. Weird. Speedy Gonzales Los Gatos Bandidos is another side-scrolling platformer and another game featuring a very fast character, but thankfully this game doesn't have Speedy flailing out of control like in the Roadrunner games. This one's a little more controlled and the level design is much better suited for your character's skill set. Speedy's friends are all partying it up until Sylvester and his buds come and kidnap them, so it's up to Speedy to rescue them. And there's usually a handful of mice placed in each stage to rescue, and they double as checkpoints as well. Speedy Gonzales can kick and occasionally pick up stuff if necessary, but this is pretty much a pure platformer. This is another game that's just okay. It's definitely not bad, but you're not really missing anything if you haven't played it. Some people like to compare this one to the first Sonic game, but this is nowhere near as interesting as that one. Having said that though, it's a perfectly okay game. Next there's Tasmania. In this game, the player takes a viewpoint behind Taz as he runs and dodges stuff, so this plays like a racing game. A very boring racing game. You just have to beat the time limit and eat some birds as you go. I don't even know what else to say here, there's just not much going on. I guess this could be a fun speedrun game for some people, otherwise I'd avoid this one. Tiny Toon Adventures Buster Bust Loose is another Konami game, and it's a game I've talked about a ton on this channel over the years. It's a great looking game that captures the look of the show perfectly. The music is familiar and well done, and the main gameplay mechanic is something a little different with a sprint meter that's used to climb walls. There's varying objectives throughout the six levels, like feeding Dizzy Devil in this boss fight here, and there's some inventive level design here as well. I'd put this one on par with the Disney Capcom games in that it's short and not particularly challenging, but it's still a fun playthrough today, and it's still a cheap cartridge. I'd put this one right alongside stuff like Aladdin and Mickey's Magical Quest. The Tiny Toon series got a second game titled Wacky Sports Challenge, also made by Konami, and this one is a surprise. It's a series of seven mini games where you pick from four different characters from the show to compete in events like a test of strength, a top-down obstacle course, bungee jumping, stuff like that. The best part being that it's four-player compatible, making it easily one of the most accessible four-player games the SNES has to offer. What I like about these games is that they're not just mashing buttons, they're predicated on some kind of skill or timing, so each game is actually somewhat interesting. So yeah, if you're looking for a good four-player game or even just a multiplayer game to play with your kids, Tiny Toon Adventures Wacky Sports Challenge is a great choice. Alright, that's all of them. In my opinion, the three best games here are the two Tiny Toons games and Looney Tunes B-Ball, although I do have a soft spot for Bugs Bunny Rabbit Rampage. And that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.